Welcome to the Female VC Lab Podcast. I have Kira here. Kira, in one line, give me your name, your title, and the <laughs> name of your fund. Sure. It's Kira Sauber, CEO, and it's with Sauber Capital. Wonderful. What inspired you to become a venture capitalist or an investor? I have to say it's been a long time coming, a little over 20 years, started in a big pharma and truly just trying to pave the way in healthcare and technology. I've always had this yearning sense of responsibility and passion and committed to really making change in the healthcare sector. And so everything I do is truly mirrored around that, whether it's diagnostics, life sciences, femtech, which is trending, health and wellness. That's awesome. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your investment thesis and go a little bit deeper about the motivation for your thesis. Yeah. I mean, look, on the debt side of things, because there's two arms of it, right? So one is going to be the venture side, which is going to be, you know, seed, pre-seed, even seed, series A. And then on the other side of that is going to be more companies that are looking for growth capital, right? Growth trajectory. And those typically are revenue generating companies and not life sciences. So you could put them in a separate bucket. But really, the thesis is centered on biotech diagnostics and women's health really focusing on companies that are innovating at the intersection of cutting edge science and impactful healthcare solutions. Again, this motivation is truly coming from seeing all these opportunities, a lot of female founders in addressing really critical healthcare needs and helping the next generation of women thrive. So I, I really like to see a lot of the female CEOs get a seat at the table, get some capital and be able to mm -hmm. push forward. Kira, are you doing anything in the longevity space? Oh, I love that you asked. After 20 plus years in the business, <laughs> starting to realize I need to look at this from also a passion play. But no, in all reality, there's truly a lot of breakthroughs. There's, you know, a big difference between health span and lifespan. Mm -hmm. You know, you can look at that that's person. True. You can look at the person that's metabolic X, really obese, overweight, but thinks that they just eat organic, right? And that's giving them health span. But on the other side of it, they're truly unhealthy. More recently, I've just been looking at inflammatory markers. So again, this is more on the biotech side. I truly believe inflammation is the cornerstone to killing a yes. lot of these cells. So if we can look at where these triggers are in my last company, I was developing large molecule monoclonal antibodies. And mm -hmm. one of them which is called a biosimilar was looking at that and, and autoimmune disorders. So truly the diagnostics that I'm investing in is preventative, if you will. And then oh, it's, that's great. it's tactical, right? So then we make sure the right therapeutic categories and the right drugs are given to patients. And again, lifespan, health span, and a lot no, of it's I, lifestyle. I'm glad you, you made that distinction there. So what are you currently learning or listening to or reading these days? Reading, I would say it's a lot of decks <laughs> of companies. <laughs> I mean, love that. No, it's probably two to three decks a day. I'm on the IC of another VC in a syndicate. A lot of it's around IP and looking yes. at the business models and the triggers on that. A lot of it's pro formas, right? More than I want to admit. Studying balance sheets and, and P&Ls and making sure these companies are at a defendable position to get funding. And then I would say for the personal, it's really just looking at a lot of books in the quote unquote longevity and the word biohacking, which I don't mm -hmm. like the word biohacking because I come from the biotech industry, right. uh, it is, but it is what it is. And just it sounds like a shortcut. Bio yeah, right? but and longevity has, has recently become a therapeutic category within the FDA. With there, there's opportunity, but there's also some ruffling of feathers within the community, which I think is a great opportunity to really work with some key opinion leaders and centers of influence to, to pave the wave for this industry. Wonderful. So the bonus question, everyone gets it. In yeah. two years, how do you see venture capital or investing having changed or evolved? Whoa, that's a loaded one. <laughs> so, I, and Hopefully you and not I, too I, loaded, Kira. <laughs> yeah, no, but before you and I were started the podcast, we were podcasting. I see venture becoming a little more specialized, increased focus on sectors like the, bi the diagnostics and biotech not being so widespread, not just saying, hey, here's our thesis for this seven to 10 year plan. 
really seeing a stronger emphasis on supporting women founders, driving both financial returns and a lasting societal impact. I also think that the venture funds have to work nicely with the private equity funds and also mm -hmm. the investment bankers as Very a person who works, that has taken venture money and has also put venture money to work. It's when you hit those next valuation inflection points or milestones, and then you mm -hmm. start going for the bigger checks, you can take venture out. And it can be a little messy. And my experience has been with the private equities. Then they say, here's our banker at this with our analyst. That's a specialty in this. Our oncologist analyst specialist with the banker is going to hold your hand and, and get the deal done and really shop it for your company. So I think that that's there's got to be more collaboration <laughs> between the two. And I also think venture has to be open up to letting their portfolio companies take on different financial instruments like debt. Instead 100%. of just filling another round, right? Because then it's, you got to go back. There's dilution. I say this as a former CEO and founder. Now, of course. There's dilution and there's cap table. But if you can give them resources, and that's not just purchase order financing or something like this, but truly structured financial instruments or alternative lending solutions, maybe not all bank-like products, I think it could be really fruitful for the portfolio companies. Absolutely. 100% agree. So how do people contact you? I think LinkedIn is truly a great resource. When I was building awesome. my company for the, for the past couple of years, I had my head down. I would probably check LinkedIn maybe once a week. Now I'm checking it probably three times a week, especially because I've been at so many networking events and speaking engagements mm. through you, right? Yes. <laughs> through Thank you. you yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. Let me so, ask you, what do you think about venture in two years? I look at, that's a good question to ask me. For venture capital in two years, I agree with what you said. Why is there a secondaries market? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself that question. Why are you selling off portions of your company as a founder? The reason why is because the IPO markets have gone cold. There aren't, there is like an appetite to have continuous venture rounds over more and more, more rounds, which mm -hmm. is fine up to a point. But then when do you execute on the actual value creation, revenue creation for a company? And how do you do that? And how much venture should you be taking as a founder? I think we've all have heard stories and know stories about founders that have, you know, gotten completely diluted out of their companies. I know people that have gotten completely oh, yeah. diluted out of their companies. They own none of it because well, they, that's, why... that's a problem. That's why you have to construct it in a way that makes sense. Also from a venture side, and I haven't gotten into the, where do I see it in two years, but on the venture side, if you could deploy less powder into company X, you could deploy powder other place, right? You almost, it's almost like, how do you want to construct your own portfolio from a venture side and say, okay, if we're going to deploy this money, how do we do it smartly and intelligently? And I think, right, doing, having all levels of funding capability just makes you a more powerful venture capitalist and having a bigger ecosystem of people, right? Okay, series A people, B people, bankers, M&A, debt instrument people. You have mm -hmm. to have the whole crowdfunding. I've had a couple come out from crowdfunding. So it's just, you have to look at it all across the whole spectrum of what a company is doing. The whole life cycle of the company as a funder. You can't just yeah. say, okay, I need to get it here and, and I'm going with my friends and doing this, which is great. It's always wonderful investing with your friends. But at some point in time, you also want to get out. Or right. know when there's parts of the company that you can peel out that are synergistic to the existing portfolio that Correct. could then liquidity event because not all the assets that are poised for growth trajectory or valuation will be a fit for that commercial schedule. You know, Correct. I've, seen mm -hmm. I've seen that as well. So, so I agree with you. Venture capitalists have to create their own ecosystem of, of partners, capital stack partners, mm -hmm. financial structure partners. And, and they also could be commercial partners. You, you just have right. to look at like your whole entire ecosystem and say, what are you attempting to do? as a venture capitalist, how are you going to get a return for an LP? If you haven't thought about that, <laughs> that's a, a whole nother question, right? I'm going to leave right. that with a question mark. Now in two years, how do I see venture capital having changed and evolved? Hopefully there'll be more conversations like this, but secondarily, there'll more, be more 
females here as we as thus the female vc lab 105 episodes you'll be 106 but the majority are women and so how do we go about amplifying those voices and getting that gap filled and also the thinking about how to fund a venture right like we're having this conversation about doesn't it make sense to add these other pieces to to a stack to a capital stack who else is thinking about that in that way underwriting it right like i look at the venture deals as like from an underwriting debt it's okay where can i get the return back on this i'm not saying amateurizing capital equipment but when i'm looking at it what is the test that i need to do where's the stress test where's the bridge to end to the p and l what's your beta risk adjustment in here right what happens Correct. if you miss a quarter Correct. so looking at it from basically an underwriting perspective which i don't think a lot of my peers and i'm not saying with me but i i know they do not look at it that way this is a great idea here's a market we can address and they get sold on the sauce and the egos of the founders And that's the thing as well. And I think what we're touching on is having more types of thinking out there creates a a more robust and more sustainable as far as like business and a more powerful type of entity, whether it be the fund or the company itself. So... You think venture is going to tighten up on their risk appetite? And you and I have talked about this. It's a little different East Coast, West Coast. But what do you think about that? Is venture, well, so Silicon Valley has their own way of thinking, and I'm going to <laughs> leave it there. But uh, yes, I think venture, it, I think it has to. I think you have to. Like yesterday, I had a conversation about it. How do we go about risk mitigating certain pieces of a fund and mm-hmm. making sure that, that the value and the actual deployment of capital is intelligent. Because they always talk about smart money. Is it really that smart? Or are are they really helping you get to where you need to go? Are they really attempting to get you a return? So you have to really think about all these things and ask yourself these questions. And this is Mm -hmm. what we think about and ask ourselves all the time. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, I believe it will. If you think about what happened in the blockchain space, same thing happened. AI is in my mind similar. They're having a lot of conversations about, okay, we need these data centers, we need power, we need energy, we need servers, we need more compute power. Well, really need compute and you need hard drives. I don't hear that piece. But the reality is you're just looking at it from that side. What about, okay, how are you going to democratize data? That's like a bigger question. No one's talking about that. Or trade it. Or trade Trade it, democratize it decentralize, make it more robust, decentralize it maybe a bit. Because there's minimal regulations now around yeah. data. I'll, say, I'll just say data. I'm not going to say AI, data. And those will come in. And then how, what are you going to do as a fund? If you're funding things like this now and a regulation comes down and you got even 20 companies doing it, yep. that now are you going to have to go raise a whole nother fund to just fix that? Fix that, yeah. Problem. What can you do to hedge that? And like you went back to commercial stuff. And how do you risk mitigate this? Because it can be a risk. Yeah. Uh It's a great point. And then you're also dealing with the hardware software issue, right? Like one on the hardware and then you have the energy. There is some really cool technology that I'm aware of you and I can talk about that off outside of this. Yeah, but that's also government backed. There's a lot of handcuffs on that from commercialization coming out of the national labs of so course. It's how do we get that here and of I course to, to being able to use it and to really change the landscape yep mm-hmm. so what are you most excited about in venture for the this last quarter of the year if you don't mind me asking the most excited thing i'm about in venture in the last quarter of the year that's a good question i'm excited about I'm excited about where is 2025 going to go? Are we going to get robots finally? There's a lot of money going into robotics, the physical robots. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of digital twin technologies. I've seen not too many AI and blockchain combinations yet. I know that's coming. I'm excited to see where is the quantum computer going to fit into all this? When is that going to come down for real? Yeah. And how are you going to now incorporate that into your your technology stack and your venture stack? Because that's going to impact data. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what is what's going to happen in 2025. Mm-hmm. So many because entrepreneurs have so many great, and wonderful ideas. 
Yeah. When you're creative. looking at ideas, how many, because you are just, I'm always so fascinated and blown away and, and truly humbled. And we got to shout out Carl for making the intro. Yes, that's thank you. Known, you know. Thank you, Carl, on the female yes. <laughs> BC Lab podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just pivot really quickly because I didn't realize that so many are women on here. I know it was a majority, but what would yes. you say are like your two or three key pearls, best practices when you're in executive leadership roles like we are, right? We're also on board the companies. We're putting money to work. What do you think the best practices are for us to make sure we're taking care of ourselves? That is an excellent question. Women, I think women need to support women. If we support ourselves and go, hey, are you taking care of yourself? I think just asking at that level um, or how are you doing today? I think asking at that level. And if you're honest, okay, everyone can hear I'm a little nasally. I'm getting over a little bit of a cold, but I'll be fine. But the point is be honest about that. If yeah. you ask me, how am I doing? Don't say, oh, I'm fine. And you're like, but Barb, you sound like you're a little nasally there. Mm-hmm. Getting over a cold, but I'm feeling better, right? Be honest about where you are in your status. And then we can collaborate in a very powerful way. I was at a couple of days ago, we were at a very powerful uh, conversation with what, there was seven female VCs there. That's a powerful, it was a powerful co- conversation. And, and we were saying like, look, we need to be more, even more collaborative because mm-hmm. there was a corporate strategic there. There was someone that worked with private equity there. There was a good mix of people. And how do we start collaborating to and to your point, add the debt in, add the other st- to get these companies from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. And so I think I think yeah. those are the two big takeaways from the podcast and the leadership, right? And the other takeaway, and it's interesting, people say, "How did you get into venture?" And that was one of the questions. It's like people get in there in a non-traditional. Most people have gotten in there in a non-traditional way. I didn't go and be a banker, my friend. Like I could have uh-huh. been a venture earlier and. My friends are like, go get this MBA. I said, I need an MBA. I've been running a company. So I know PL, I know this, I know how to run all the spread. What what was the purpose of that? <laughs> yeah. So if you think about that too, like how do you get into venture? Like a lot of people are curious. You almost have to be doing it in a way. Like yeah. you have to be doing it to get into it, which is weird. But, oh yeah, I remember 15 years ago, my like the first role I think it took as president was a freight-based technology medical device, and I was like, wait a minute, we're going to venture. And I said, what do you mean? They go, they just want to hear your idea. I mean, I'm obviously making this short, and they'll invest in you. I'm like, what do you mean? I was so used to a bank, I had already bought my first house. I'm like, what do you mean? They just want to see our investor deck, and then they're going to cut us a check. And I mm-hmm. was here seven a gazillion years ago. And I'm like, wait a minute, there's no compliance here. There's no this, there's no that. There's no lawyers that get into the table. They're like, no, they'll just give the contract. It's venture money. And I'm like, to me, it was, and back then we did not have Google on our cell phone or anything. I don't want to do Right, that's true. But yeah, but I remember. And then after that, working through the hoops with the VCs also, I had another company with a noose around my neck from a VC. <laughs> and that <laughs> so can happen too. But the problems are there too. And then you just try to do better. That's right. And I think what are the best practices? I think this is a, this is a system just like every other system and systems are made to change and evolve. And if you don't change and evolve, you really do die. (laughs) Right. We know this, we can look Uh at history across history, right? Where things have gone away because they didn't, things are going away right now because they didn't change and evolve. I think, I think with the, with the collaborative forces that we're combining, things can change and evolve and I think it has to change and evolve I be more inclusionary and less exclusionary yes yes and a lot of people the other thing I just want to add because for some of the listeners which I'm sure are going to be people that are looking for venture capital they have to understand what our balance sheet looks like and that's where true. does our money come from it's not that you and I are just sitting here and we have all this money and we that's our net worth or something they have to understand that people also invest with us also give us the money that then trust the judgment to put it to work for my, for my other one for the debt there's a full-blown underwriting team the high fast engine that looks at the probability of risk versus default that pulls a thousand different data points all at once to spit out a score then it goes mm-hmm. over to another voting committee for the other yes. people. So people also have to understand that we have roles and responsibilities absolutely I've had founders that are like harassing me on LinkedIn. Did you look at my deal? Are you going to fund my deal? I'm like, this does not fit our thesis very specifically or friends that want funding for their company. 
And I think that's an important note to add. It, that's a good note. And I like how you said, as a founder, just said this at the thing, a fund is like a massive startup, really. We're still, we look for money. We have to fit into a criterion. We have decks. We have d- diligence. Like we have things, compliance. We have a lot of stuff. But the, the thing about it is, like you said, if you don't fit in our criterion, we really can't help you. We can maybe refer you to someone else, but we really mm-hmm. can't help you because it's so far outside of what we're supposed to be doing. Because when we came up with our documents, we said, look, we're only going to be looking into this little narrow slice of stuff. And if you go outside of the narrow slice of stuff, you may be able to do that once, maybe, but then you have to call all these people and go, okay, we need a meeting and, and nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. However, your deal still may not get funded. Just this is another thing. Go do some homework, right? Just like you did homework for Tam, Sam, and Sam and your competitors and everything else. What's your value? Like from a venture capital side, you have to go do some homework because if not, you're going to hear a lot of no's for no reason. And Don't put yourself through that. I'll just say I get deal fatigue. I'm like, you've been harassing me for two years now. You haven't read it. Even if you fit the criteria, I'll pass it off to a colleague. Deal mm-hmm. fatigue is a real situation too. And I'm not trying to be a jerk about it. But again, like you said, just take the five minutes, which is why I've purposely actually changed a little bit of my LinkedIn because when it used to have the about I me, did, did you? Okay. Cause I've gotten a lot of people that are like, Kira, update your about me, update software capital. I'm like, no, it's there for a reason. Mm-hmm. Look at where I'm speaking. Look at who I'm talking to. Look at what I'm posting about, and then you can get it or go to the website. I, I mean, didn't realize you changed have, yours too. Yeah, I did. Okay. I, I did just update mine, and we all have websites. <laughs> I'll go click on there. Take, like you said, take five minutes, click a couple of buttons, and see what it's about. And yeah, it's, a, exactly. it's there. Yeah, I, I probably now that you said I probably have to update mine. I pulled it because we used to have a contact form and then a deal submission sheet. But it would get so bogged we, down. We don't. We don't. With do underwriting, that. yeah, I know. As a matter of fact, what we're about to do, Kira. So first announcement on this on the female VC lab. The female VC lab is going to get a GPT as well. So if you want to ask it, what is Kira's thinking on certain things? What is she actually investing in? You, it will respond to that. That's between now and the end of the year. But the other that one that does is... not surprise me that you're doing that. Wow, that is so exciting. <laughs> awesome. So that's coming soon. That's coming yeah. soon. But okay. the second thing that's happening is on the fund website, the same thing is happening. You'll be able to submit some things and then we'll be able to read through it and go, it's gonna match our criterion and what you submitted. And then once that happens, then we'll give you some feedback and either you'll get, hey, contact us. Or, hey, here's the, everybody will get a remedy and either they'll get contact us or come back later, right? Yep. Because, all right. At least they're not ghosted. (laughs) Well, no, they'll at least get some type of feedback. Why are you holding back the feedback? Oh, yeah. Especially nowadays when you could put it into an AI. (laughs) If you have feedback that seriously can help somebody, give them the feedback. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, kindness is free. Time is expensive, but kindness is free. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's triggering because when I was a chief begging officer, you <laughs> raising money. I'm trying you know? to trigger you. Here. <laughs> <laughs> but no, really, I remember just being like, I fit the thesis. I had a spreadsheet and I'm like, I was tracking deal flow, what they did. I had Google alerts on it. I mean, it's a few years ago. So I could see like who was putting money where if it was public and LinkedIn. And I remember being like, why are you ghosting me? You've already had three Zooms. I've gone to two dinners with you. Just give me feedback, right? It's not now, maybe later or the team or you don't like me, you don't like our performa, you don't like the bridge to NLP and whatever it was, but just something because when you're raising capital, you're probably going to get a hundred no's yeah, <laughs> you know? and the, a day, a month, a week. That's back, so it, that's back to my rejection comment. No yes. one wants to really get that rejection. If so. we can help each other with that, I think that would be great. And it, like you said, it's got AI. Yeah, it's you, got AI. <laughs> yeah, you and I look at a gazillion decks. I can tell probably within maybe 30 seconds to two minutes, if it's high, high, highly scientific, where the issue is or what my comments are. I promise you almost 90% of the time I chime in with questions. And for those listening that know me from LinkedIn that are like a cold outreach or even that, like I will always, mostly always, I don't even know how to articulate this. If it's within my way, I'll give feedback or set, or send a Calendly link, the meeting. Awesome. But let's try to help each other. People, they oversell, they overcomplicate. And look, I used to do that too. I was running a biotech. It's make it easy. No more than seven sentences. Here's what if I'm doing. That. Here's what I'm excited about. If that, totally. 
but just make it short, clean, sweet, because you could say, hey, are you investing in blah, blah, blah. Just make it like direct. Don't over complicate it. No yeah. Just, I, you know, I used to do the would I test. Would I want to read this? So when I would send an email, I'd read it back to myself and then I would look at myself and be like, no. I mean, look at these free tidbits. I love there it. There you go. Free tidbits. At practices. least for me and Kira. <laughs> <laughs> these are our tidbits, right? Eventually we'll get the AI to do like the best practices recap, right? From all your podcasts. Yes. The AI will do, you know what? That's a good thing to put together. I do have everyone's two years. So you'll be able to ask for four years, like who's, who nailed it on two years. So that one will come out as well in the podcast AI. You're so good, Barb. I love it. I love it. And you're truly, you're putting your money where your mouth is and behind 